Hello there and welcome to another Flat Earth debunking video. I never thought I would do any more of these, but this little Flat Earth meme just isn't going away, is it? It's just like a little turd that won't flush away no matter how many times you pull the chain. Well, I'm here for another yank on the chain, see if we can't get it flushed out of the system uh, with some more facts. Right, anyway, what I'm going to be looking at in this video is the Tropic of Cancer, the Equator and the Tropic of Capricorn, and I'm going to be using some information about um, the way the Sun moves along the Tropic of Cancer, the Equator and the Tropic of Capricorn, and uh, some distances. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll explain a bit more as I'm going along how I'm going to do this, but we'll be using this information to get reasonably good um, approximations for the length of these three lines on the Earth using some very basic and simple information. So the first one, the first thing we want to do is just get some lengths and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, Central and South America and the, the, the length that the, trop the Tropic and the Equator, Tropic of Cancer, the Equator and the Tropic of Capricorn cross South America and Central America. So you can see the Tropic of Cancer crosses Mexico. So let's get a rough estimate for how long that line is from one side of Mexico to the other. So it goes from there to there. Now I'm only going to be going for about two significant figures. So we'll call that 560 miles. Put it in here, 560. Oh, you can see I've got a little table here uh, set up to get a lot of results together. So tropical cancer distance, 560 miles. Next thing we want to do is get the uh, the equator. So let's go down here. Um, so it goes from here to here. So that's what, roughly 2,100 miles to two significant figures. That's fine. 2,100. And the last one, Tropic of Capricorn. From about there to about there. So that's roughly 1,600 miles. Now, if the more observant amongst you will notice that this line diverges from the Tropic of Capricorn. The reason for that is because the lines of latitude don't follow paths of least distance from places they connect on Earth, just to do with it. It's just to do with the geometry of a sphere, but it's not a massively big difference. And like I said, we're not going for hair splitting accuracy on this. We're just trying to get rough figures just to see if they compare well with each model. So two significant figures, 1,600 miles. Okay. 1,600. That should be fine. Now, what I'm going to do here is we're going to work out how long it takes the sun to cross from one side of Mexico to the other side along the Tropic of Cancer on the solstice, the June solstice. So you can see here, um, this website here tells you what time solar noon is in GMT. So according to this, now we'll just do it to the nearest five minutes, so we'll say. So that's 1935, say we'll call it. Um, and then it crosses along the Tropic of Capricorn, sorry, Tropic of Cancer. It crosses to here, and about, so about t uh, 2010. So if you prefer 12 hours, that's about, about 7.35 p.m. to about what, 8, 10 p.m., so what, 35 minutes, roughly, give or take. We're not, we're not, like I said, we're not fuss, we're not going for too much accuracy, okay? Just getting some rough figures here. Um, now, now the, the equator, if I can get this, Oh, probably these things hard to control. Oh, right there, right, okay. Right, so the equator goes from where am I? It goes from there to there. So just about here to about here. So if we go back to the other website, it's from about here. Now what we do have to do is we have to change the date the, the date. So we'll go to the equinox, so the sun is directly over the equator which is going to be the 23rd of September, 23rd of this month. So, so say we call it, what, 1615 
go straight across here to about what 1815 about two hours roughly you okay with that yeah i'd say it right from about quarter past four in the afternoon to about Quarter past six. Remember, these aren't local times, though. These are this is GMT. Okay, so it, according to this, it the sun takes two hours to cross South America following the um, the equator. So let's put that information in. So two hours, hundred and twenty minutes. Tropic of Capricorn. No, Tropic of Capricorn. So you're roughly about Sao Paulo, right across here. Let's line this up again. So it's roughly from about here to here. So now again, we want to change the time. So the time, so the sun's directly overhead. So we'll go to December twenty-first, roughly. Uh, so where are we? So what about about three o'clock? Well, fifteen hundred hours right across to. But, 1640 hour and 40 minutes 100 minutes sound okay about 100 minutes to cross south america so on the tropical capricorn the sun takes about 100 minutes to get from one side of um south america to the other side so let's put that information in here 100 minutes now we can use this information to get an estimate for the length of <coughs> each of these lines now remember these, these, the sun takes 24 hours to complete, um, a, as, um, to repeat one complete, what would you call it, circuit of each of these lines. So it takes 24 hours to get right round the tropics and right round the equator. Now 24 hours is 1,440 minutes. So if we do 1,440 minutes divided by the time times the distance, that gives us a roughly a rough estimate for the length. And I can just because I've put an equation, I can just pull it down. So there we go. So this gives us reasonably good estimates for the lengths of the Tropic of Cancer the equator and the Tropic of Capricorn in miles. So according to this information, the Tropic of Cancer is about 23,000 miles to two, deaths, two significant figures. The equator is 25,000 miles. Tropic of Capricorn is 23,000 miles. All of these to two significant figures. That's the only accuracy that we could really go to considering the, the you know, we, the other information we used was a wee bit rough and ready. It wasn't, it's reasonably accurate though. So these are these are reasonably good approximations based on the information that we've got. And they do fit with what we expect. According to the spherical Earth model, the tropical cancer is roughly 23,000 miles. The equator is roughly 25,000 miles. The tropic of Capricorn is roughly 23,000 miles. Now... I don't know if I really have to spell out for you that this is a disaster for the flat Earth model because the Tropic of Cap Capricorn would have to be significantly longer than the equator, not shorter than it. In fact, if the equator was about 25,000 miles, the Tropic of Capricorn would have to be, I remember I calculated, it would have to be sort of like, about 49,000 miles or something like that. I mean, it, it's the, I mean, okay, I mean, yeah, I've not used 100% accuracy here, but it's not just, no, not close to the flat earth model. It's completely nowhere near any predictions that the flat earth model would give. The part of the problem is with the flat earth model is that flat earthers won't specify exactly what they believe distances are anyway. They won't specify exactly how far they believe it is from the North Pole to the equator. I've asked them. They get all funny about it. They won't talk about it. So I don't even really know what the equator's length, the length of the equator is meant to be on the flat earth model anyway. But this can't possibly be correct. 
On the flat Earth, the Tropic of Cancer would have to be less than the equator, and the equator would have to be less than the Tropic of Capricorn. Sorry, the Tropic of Cancer would have to be less than the equator, and the equator would have to be less than the Tropic of Capricorn. <coughs> now, well, if the Earth is flat, if the Earth is flat, or you believe the Earth is flat, then you must believe that some of this information is completely wrong. Well, what exactly, what information do you think is wrong? The distances? You think that the distance across Mexico, this distance across South America, and this distance across South America here are radically different from what we generally believe them to be? What, not just what they are in Google Earth, what they are in any, any source you check will give you the same answers as Google Earth. I mean, how feasible is that? Is that a realistic option? If this was the year 1015, maybe you would be right, but this is the year 2015. I don't see how that's a realistic option. Because we live in the age, a modern age of international travel, thousands of airplanes and ships fly and sail all over the world get to where they're supposed to be going, which means navigators have very accurate information about how far apart places are on Earth and what direction they're in. So, if navigators can get their, find their way around the world, and yet this information we get <coughs> given to us is radically wrong, then navigators must be using different information from the rest of us, but never say anything about it for some reason. <coughs> I don't know, is that reasonable? Well, if these lengths aren't wrong, I don't see how they could be. Are you suggesting that these times are wrong on this website? That the sun <coughs> doesn't, isn't at the highest point in the sky at the times that this website's suggesting? Well, you know, I've, I've used this website to, to check against what it predicts for my location in Scotland, and it's, it's all accurate. So, why would it be accurate for me, but not for some rest of the world? I mean, how feasible is it that all the information on this website is garbage? I mean, if you... If you want to argue that it's flat, then you really have got your work cut for you. You're going to have to show which information is wrong. Is it the distances or is it the times? And give some account of how this information could be wrong. How it could work. How, who, who's doing it? Who's putting out the false information? How are they doing it? How many people are in on it? How does it work? How does this conspiracy manage to do all this? And how is it that no one notices? Okay, this, the information from these websites predicts these lengths here for the Tropic of Cancer, the Equator, and the Tropic of Capricorn. Sorry. <coughs> <coughs> oh, my throat's gone. Right. <coughs> I'll get a little drink. So, um, so yeah, what, so what is it? What's wrong? Is it this? Is it this? Or is it both of them? And how does it work? How does it, how does it work? How is this false information put out there? Who's doing it? How do they work it? And how do they manage to get away with it without anyone noticing? Okay, that's basically what I'd like to know if you believe the Earth is flat because these are the predictions I get.